Okay, so I don't want to cause any unnecessary concern or alarm surrounding Prince Harry's mental health. I mean, God forbid this becomes some sort of sensationalist, clickbaity gossip channel <laughs> there, but for the grace of God go I, eh? Although I have to say, I think the term clickbait gets used with far too negative a connotation. After all, we do have to bake the clicks, create a pretty little thumbnail and a compelling title. Otherwise, where are the clicks going to come from? I mean, you wouldn't tell a fisherman to go out without fish bait, would you? Oh no, just go and stand on the riverbank and be yourself, be authentic, and the fish will just come naturally. No, they won't! You stupid little fish, don't know what you want, do you? And calling it baiting is a bit hyperbolic as well. You know, when you click on a video and it doesn't give you exactly what you want, what is your reaction? Oh mm, no, oh, this is shit. I think that's the same reaction a fish has when it gets a hook through its throat. Oh, how inconvenient. No, it's screaming in agony! Some of you might be disappointed with this video so far, but I, I bet none of you are thrashing around. Oh, he got me! Oh. Right, so give the video a chance, okay? All right, let's get into it. Every every <laughs> single element of, of the Japanese culture yeah. is is really unique. So Prince Harry is back to doing what he does best. He's flying around the world looking bemused and battered and disheveled as he gives speeches to people who are equally confused as he is as to why he's there. What's he talking about this time? About sports values. He's at a sports values summit in Tokyo. The special edition. And very, very mm. special. I... You sure are, Harry. You sure are. <laughs> I, I noticed it the first, my first visit in uh, four mm. years ago uh, when I came for the Rugby mm. World Cup. And I would happily live here if mm. you'd have me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a couple of grifters like you and Megan would feel right at home in that ultra conscientious culture they have in Japan. You know, it, Japan might be the one place on earth where if they heard you complaining about wanting to uh, unalive yourselves because of uh, having to do a few ribbon cuttings for the royal family, they might just turn around to you and say, well... You did lose the Netflix deal. I mean, maybe that is the only honourable way out. I'd do it if I were you. Um, but thank you for, for, for your hospitality. Prince Harry told an audience in Japan today that he would happily live here if you'd have me <laughs> during his summit on sport, community and philanthropy on his trip to Tokyo. The Duke of Sussex smiled, laughed and gleefully, more like glazedly, gleefully waved to the crowd as he praised the warmth, the warmth, compassion and generosity of the special Japanese culture. The beaming, more like steaming, the beaming 38-year-old son of King Charles III told the crowd, I've been involved in many charities for most of my life and I get a huge fulfillment. I get a huge amount of fulfillment giving back to as many people as possible. My life is charity, always has been. Always will be. Wow, he's like a modern day Mother Teresa of Calcutta. You know, if Mother Teresa had been a man and instead of living in a shelter in Calcutta had lived in a massive mansion in the most exclusive neighbourhood of California. He's like uh, Father Harold of Montecito. That's what he should be called. Harry said he had enjoyed the most incredible Kobe steak, both for dinner and for lunch today. <laughs> Adding your warmth and your compassion, your generosity, every single element of the Japanese culture is really unique and very, very special. Harry will travel to Singapore later this week for his fundraising Centre Bali Polo Cup on Saturday, which he has said will help young people affected with HIV AIDS. Now, some of you are going to call me a cynic, right? Again. Uh, but I don't think that him playing polo in Singapore is going to cure any AIDS. I do worry sometimes that I, I have an astounding lack of empathy for people. You know, that I might be somewhere on the psychopathic spectrum. <laughs> I always, whenever I see charity stuff, I'm like, oh, fuck off. God forbid it ever happens to me, eh? <laughs> I just, I can't. You know when you see people doing fun runs, sponsored runs, oh, I'm going to do a half marathon for cancer. It's all a very noble thing. Is it noble though? Are they really doing it for cancer? Are they fighting cancer? Or are they fighting their own demons? Didn't daddy give you enough attention? Is that why you're dressed up as a bear running the London Marathon, you mad bastard? <laughs> people who are literally mm. at mm. rock bottom. They sure are, Harold. They sure are. Not you though. Look at him fighting off those ninjas. How many of us feel battered? Mm. They don't know what to do with their life. Mm. 
they themselves, their family, mm. their children, every single element has been disrupted mm. and changed forever. Harry, we're supposed to be talking about the value that sport has. This is a sports values summit. Here's it. People who are oh. literally mm. at the rock opera. bottom. Mm. They don't know what to do with their life. Mm. They themselves, their family, their children. Every single one has been with a double bed, a good sized basin covered with mirror doors, a beautiful window looking down on the courtyard, the fountain, the bronze statue of a roe deer buck. How many of us feel battered? They're not going to stop until she dies. Anyway, the article goes on to talk about how uh, Netflix have apparently paid three million pounds for the rights to a romantic novel, which is supposedly based on Harry and Meghan's uh, romance, you know. And uh, the, the Sussexes themselves are going to produce this uh, film version of the novel that Netflix have bought the rights to. And uh, it's so they're going to make a film about themselves. They're going to produce a film about themselves because obviously they love. It says here it's right up their alley because they love love stories and rom coms. Oh, that's nice. The Sussexes famously wanted to tell their own love story in their bombshell 2022 Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan. Do you remember their bombshell Netflix documentary with all the bombshells? It certainly bombed. <laughs> you know, I said at the beginning of this video that I don't really have a lot of empathy for, you know, people and charities and all that shit, right? But uh, these Netflix executives and uh, the marketing teams that have to keep trying to push Harry and Meghan on, their, on, a, on an ever less willing uh, public, um, I, I do feel sorry for them. You know, it breaks my little heart. Uh, who is, unironically, waiting for this drama, this feature film of the Harry and Meghan romance story. I mean, anyone who needs to know anything about Harry and Meghan that they're willing to tell is uh, able to go and watch the six-part bombshell Netflix documentary or go and read the tell-all memoir by Harry, which is 500 pages long. and uh, Or you can listen to the Audible version. I don't know who is waiting for this film uh, about these two people who've done nothing and who nothing has happened to. I mean, they're diehard fans. Are they waiting for this? Uh, the haters? Uh, the grifter bitch reaction video makers? Uh, who wants this? How can you market it? Nobody... I don't know how or why. How or why? It's not like Harry and Meghan are the only sort of vapid, vacuous celebrities to uh, make uh, autobiographies and uh, uh, documentaries about themselves. I mean, we see it now with all the footballers doing it on, on Netflix. A, for every footballer has a documentary about themselves and they're all boring as fuck. You know, Michael Owen's got autobiographies. Wayne Rooney! Um, and they're depressing, all of them. Horribly depressing. <laughs> I understand you want another source of revenue. Fabulous. Whatever. I'm not against people making money. Uh, <laughs> the market decides, right? My problem is, if I was a celebrity, I mean a bigger celebrity than I already am, I, I just, I would feel a little bit ashamed looking around on Netflix at other biopics. You know, you'd have there. Uh, Joe Simpson touching the void fell into a crevasse. Wow, amazing. He dragged himself out with his broken bones and he survived somehow. Against all odds, or 127 hours, the man who got his arm trapped under a, a boulder, right? And uh, had to cut it off with a pen knife, you know? Or, I don't know, people who get lost at sea or, or, or alive, you know, the Uruguayan rugby team or <laughs> stuff like that. I would, I would watch that and I would go, oh, fuck. What am I doing making? I've got no stories like that. I didn't have to eat anyone. 
Oh, 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 I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed of myself. I'm just going to, oh, forget it. I'll just go and do some talks at charity gigs and stuff and forget it. Scrap it, Netflix. We don't need the, 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 no, it's done. We've, it's enough. The people associated. Anyway, that's just me, though. That's just the kind of modest guy I am. I wouldn't be making biopics for, doesn't matter how many hundreds of millions you offer me, Netflix. You ain't getting it, okay? All right, so just shut up. Um... I I just want to make some lovely reaction content for YouTube. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm talking about now. It's over. Let it go. Good night.